Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sean and you are watching Key Totally Vintage with Sean Glasson. So I wanted to sit down and film a little, well it's not little, there's quite a bit here, but a haul video for you guys of everything that I found since the end of 2020 and the beginning of this year. Because I found some pretty amazing things and some things that I've been wanting to add to my collection. And again, if you would like to purchase anything just give me a, a email you know or message me on uh, Instagram or send me an email at key totally period vintage at gmail.com and we can discuss it so I guess I'll just start with what's closest to me and I found three of these lucite candlesticks with the gold fleck on the inside these I almost had like a mini heart attack when I found them because they are very hard to find and to find three of the larger ones which is about I want to say about tw almost 12 inches I haven't measured them yet but be able to find these in the wild at a really good price is is hard to do now I found these at a thrift or actually at it was an antique store um, here locally, and I paid $6 a piece for these, which is very good. Um, these will be for sale. I'm not keeping these. Um, I already have two on top of my hutch here, and that's all I really wanted, but I couldn't pass these up. Um, so if you're interested in these, these are from, you know, mid-century modern. They have the gold flex. The wicks are in amazing condition. Someone really took good care of these. And, of course, you know, you do not light these. These are made out of lucite. They are very, very cool. And then, today when I went to Orange Tree Antiques, I found just a few things. Um, I found this Lefton Valentine Girl. Now, I was kind of taken back when I got home and looked at her a little closer, but her arm there... I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, has been reattached. Now, I really couldn't tell in the store. Like I said, I didn't see until I got home. There is a left-in sticker on the bottom. Um, so this I won't be selling. I'll be just putting it in my collection. Um, I would not have bought her because she was $15. And I didn't even see that her little arm was broken. But she'll be going in my collection back here on the hutch. And... I mean, she's in good condition otherwise, and you really can't notice that her arm was broken, but, I mean, just look at her little, her face there, like, so pretty, like, so I was happy with that, and then I found this little green dish, I think it's depression glass, I don't really know, I only paid three dollars for it, but I thought that it was really cool and a really fun color. And I was going just looking for St. Patrick's Day, Easter, and Valentine stuff to like decorate with. I thought this would be kind of cool for Easter and St. Patrick's because you, you know it could go both ways. And then I found these cute little ceramic ducks. They're very pale yellow with blue eyes. It doesn't have any markings on the bottom. They're very light and very thin. I'm not quite sure when they were made, but they're just really cute. And I thought these would be good for Easter decorations or whatnot. And, and look at their cute little faces. Like, how could you not? And they were only $3 for the pair. I mean, so cute. And then I found <clears throat> a whole bunch of vintage Valentines. Now, like, I found this bigger one, which is blank on the inside, so you could be reused if you like. And then I found some of these. Very cute. I would say, like, anywhere from, like, the 50s to the 60s. Now, some of these have been wrote in, some of them have not, but for decorations or to put in a junk journal or a scrapbook, 
you know, these are just so stinking cute. Now, I got two of these, but these will be available. So if you're interested, please, you know, send me an email or send me a message on Instagram or message me, you know, in the comments there. But I mean, these just have so much character and I can't believe that this one has a little note on the inside that someone wrote. But I can't believe like how in good condition these are that they've made it as long as they have. No rips, no tears, the colors are still vibrant. You know, I've seen where people make like garland out of these vintage valentines. Like how cute would that be? This little boy, he has like glitter and he has, he's on a dinosaur. Like how cute is that? I just, I couldn't pass them up. And the smaller ones were like 50 cents a piece. The bigger ones were a dollar. I, I just couldn't. And pass them up for that price like that is really cool and so like I said those will be available if anyone is interested and I picked this they said it was Fenton I don't know it's not marked anywhere Fenton but it's just a, a vintage milk glass ruffle bowl I thought it'd be really kind of cute to put red roses in for Valentine's Day or pretty much you could use it for any occasion really but I just thought it was really cool I got this at the Wirewood Antiques here in Altamont. I only paid $6 for it, but I mean, it is no chips, no cracks. It's really in great condition. And I thought it would look really pretty with like red or pink roses in it. And then when we went to, um, we went to Mount Dora because I saw that George the Antique Nomad was there for their big, you know, antique extravaganza. I just could not bring myself to, like, once I saw how many cars were there, like, I bet there was, like, anywhere from 15 to 2,000 people there. I just could not bring myself to risk because there's no way you could social distance or anything like that. So, again, I just was like, no, let's not do that. So we went to, like, Goodwill, and I found this. Again, I don't know who made it because it's not marked. But it's the hobnail, has a little feet on it, has three of them, and it has a ruffle edge. No chips, no cracks, amazing, no staining. I paid $4 for this. And I thought this would be good in like a display, you know, put candy in it, put potpourri in it. There's so many different things you could do with this, and I just thought it was a really nice piece. And for $4, you really can't go wrong. And Milk Glass is, is making a comeback, but I just thought this one was really pretty. And then at the Wirewood Antiques, I found this planter. And I don't know who made it. It's not marked on the bottom. Um, I paid $5 for it. I really like the red color. I thought it would be neat for Valentine's Day or um, maybe Christmas. Um, I came home and planted a ivy plant in it and it's setting on the the cabinet I have in the living room there and it looks just really pretty with all the other valentine stuff and the little red and the red with the pop of green is just I thought it was really nice five dollars I didn't think it was a bad price I cleaned it up and it will work perfect for a planter and then I bought this because I thought it could possibly be fire and light. Well, I've learned that it's not. It's a, it's a snowball votive holder by, I can't remember, it starts with a K. Um, it was sold at Bloomingdale's um, for like $24. It is extremely heavy. I paid $1.50 for this at a, at a local thrift store close to... Um, I can't remember <laughs> but 
$1.50, I thought, you know, I learned that this is not fire and ice, but it is really, really pretty, like clear. I don't know if it's crystal, but it is heavy. Um, so if anyone is interested in this, I'd be interested in selling it because it's not something I was going to collect unless it was fire and light. Um, no, again, no chips, no cracks. Um, it's, I bet it would be super pretty with a votive candle in it. Very pretty. And um, in the video where I went to um, the antique mall in Lakeland, Florida, I found a couple things there. So I found this Valentine planter in really good condition. I don't know who made it. Um, looks like there used to be a gold sticker on the bottom, but it is long gone. Um, the cold paint is still in really good condition. There's a little, you know, some around the edges, but that's to be expected for something. But all in all, it's not in bad condition at all. I paid $3 for this, and again, it's just going to be something I put in my Valentine's um, displays. And then I found this little planter, and... I just really like fell in love with her face and everything and then when I got home I seen that the arm was broken but whoever did it did it in a way that it was really hard unless you turn it at the right way and you can see a line there because it was almost where her dress sleeve was so whoever repaired it did a really good repair I only paid three dollars for it and I thought for like a spring display at Easter you know, you could you could use this for a multitude of things. I still need to clean the inside there. But this will look cute on someone's vanity with the makeup brushes or anything like that. Or in a bathroom to hold different things. But like I said, whoever repaired it did an amazing job. And I, like I said, I couldn't see anything else. But for $3 and it doesn't say you know, who made it on the bottom, but it's, she's so pretty. And then I was going, the intent to look for, like I said, Easter, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's, and I found this little bell with this little elf on the top, and he has little shamrocks. And I think it was like $5, and I thought, oh, that would be kind of cute for like a St. Patrick's Day display. And then I, for life me, couldn't figure out who made it until I got home and it says Avon 1983 down there in the bottom. Now I know some people don't like Avon, but I thought this was super cute and it would serve the purpose of what, you know, I'm looking for for St. Patrick's Day and it, it's in really good shape, no chips or cracks. It still rings, so I was like, you know, why not? And then um, at the Wildwood or wherever this, um, I didn't get this on video, but uh, Gary and I went <clears throat> to this thrift store and um, oh, she was in the antique mall, and this was five dollars and i collect vintage santa stuff it's a i believe it's a home co santa and he's a piggy bank well when i got out to the car i looked inside the piggy bank because i was wondering um you know just wanted to look at the inside and there was three dollars inside the piggy bank so my five dollar purchase now turned into a two dollar purchase um I thought he was super cute, his his little face. Now I love him even more. Um, so um, the little three dollars are gonna stay in there. It's kind of sad. I hope whoever's this was, um, they I don't know if they knew it was in there or what. You know, probably someone's grandma put it in there, gave it to him for Christmas, and they never looked inside. So three dollars is gonna stay in there and just stay with Santa for the rest of its time 
And then we were at a antique place in Mount Dora. And I didn't film this one either. This was before I started my YouTube. But I found these beautiful salt and pepper shakers that are Holt Howard. And I love Holt Howard Santa Clauses, which I have some in my collection. And I was looking at them and I was like, oh, these are really cute. And I think they were only like $10. Um, and it said as is. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then the tag was on the back of this one. When I got home, you can see there's a chunk missing out of the back of her head. So again, it was broken and whoever put it together did a really good job. Um, so yeah, so just to set on my shelf at Christmas or whatnot, you know, from this side you can't tell. And I am still, I still really like them. Um, and they were made in 1950, it's either 1954 or 1959, I can't tell because it's kind of smudged. But... For my for my collection, I'm happy with it. And then, while I was shopping with my sister and my nieces, I found this little Napco Angel made in 1956. Um, my birthday is in April, and I was also born on Easter Sunday in 1980. In 1980. So, I paid $12.50 for him, and he just... He's going to be in my personal collection. Um, no chips or cracks. He's in excellent, excellent condition. Um, I was very impressed. It's from 1956. And then this started a whole nother collection for me. And then I found the March Angel, which she's holding, you know, a shamrock in this hand and I think another one down there. I don't know what these red things are. If anyone else, you know, might know, like, I don't know what that is. But she has, has no chips or cracks. She does not have a date. She's made by Napco. But no date on the bottom. But she is still really pretty. Will be very pretty in my St. Patrick's Day collection. And then I found this August Angel for my friend Beth, because her birthday is in August. And it's a Napco Angel as well, no date on this one. But she's pretty, she has no chips or cracks, she has not been decapitated or dewinged in any way. She's very pretty and I can't remember what I paid, I got it on eBay. And don't be afraid to look on eBay, like there's plenty of offer, offer ups and stuff like that and you can get really nice stuff at a good price if you are patient and you find the right listing. And then I found this little March Angel. It's a Nesco and I think it's made out of bisque and um because it, it's not it doesn't have a glaze over it. I paid I think a dollar for her at a at a local little thrift store and she is not you know she has no chips or cracks um, as far as I can tell that the flower all of the petals there's nothing maybe there might have been a tip on that one but for a dollar she's super pretty and now I can kind of understand what Misty's saying about the feel of bisque items I'm not like I prefer like the glaze instead of like this kind of rough um, feeling but for a little display or something like that she's super cute um, now if anyone's interested I I will be selling her if, you, if you're interested and then at the same place I found this now he has some issues but this really cute poodle now, he would have been a part of a chain gang with, like, little babies. Sadly, he has been misplaced from his babies, but so that's broken off and his tail is broken off. But this is going to go to my friend Beth. Like, it, it's very 1950s, very, you know, very kitschy, and 
I mean, look at his eyebrows. Like, he's very, very sassy, like, nose turned up, all the whole nine yards. But, I mean, I paid a dollar. And I know there's some issues, but she'll love him nonetheless, even though he, you know, he, he doesn't have his kids or his little tail. But, I mean, to sit on a little shelf somewhere, like, that's just super cute. And then, um, where I found, the same place where I found this hutch that I redid, I found these cat votive holders. Now, this one says Avon, which I didn't know until later, but this one does not, and they're identical. And there's no markings on this one. Now, I know that this glass candle cat votive holder can be worth money. Um, I don't know much about it, but this is going to go to my friend Beth. Um, I paid like three dollars a piece for these. This one is, they're both pretty heavy. Um, I think the one that's not Avon is a lot clearer glass. Um, I don't know, this one probably just needs a good cleaning. Sorry. A good cleaning like I don't know if it was in like a smoker's house but it seems kind of yellowed I don't know but I'm gonna give them a good clean and they're gonna go to Beth and she'll she'll love them nonetheless and then I found one of these silver plate um, I think it was for like a pot like a chafe a chafing dish you put like a, a burner down here and it keeps whatever up here warm like a teapot or something like that. But I use these for plant stands to like elevate plants in a display. <clears throat> I paid, I think like two, three bucks for this, but I loved the, the detail on the legs. Um, I don't know who made this. It's, it has a substantial weight to it. Um, International Silver Company, made in Hong Kong. So I don't know if it's how old it is. I just liked it for that purpose. It's a it's a way to add height to a display, a new way to display a plant. Um, and it was it was a you know it was cheap enough. And this is a good way to use these older silver plate items and get a new use out of them. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then I found this vintage tablecloth at a thrift store same place where I bought the hutch and I just really like the colors in it thought it'd be really pretty for spring like for Easter and I don't know what it is about these vintage linens like just the feel of them is way better than what you can buy nowadays and I don't know exactly how old it is I don't know if it's from the 50s or the 40s but it's no holes in excellent condition and then I have this one and it's it's really pretty I have this one in this red and blue and then one in just blue but it's an amazing print no stains rips or tears and I paid ten dollars um, for these and these like I said are in excellent condition the blue one is in just the same shape um, but I just love how they feel and how they look on my my table it adds color to the kitchen and just kind of dresses up your table to make it look even better and in the picture that I posted about this haul, the, the lace tablecloth, I got at the same place and I paid $3 for it. So I was very pleased with the tablecloth and I, the lace just adds a different, you know, different kind of element. And then I found this antique, vintage antique, I'm not quite sure because there's nothing listed on the bottom here, but I found this and it was like $4. And I was like, this would be perfect for my bathroom and to plant an ivy plant in. So I brought it home, washed it up, 
and I went ahead and put an ivy plant in it and this is going to be in my bathroom. Like these vintage planters you can use for so many different things. You can use it as a planter, you can put it on your desk to hold your pens and everything. Girls you can use it on your vanity and hold your makeup brushes or your q-tips or whatever. Don't be afraid to reuse these in an unconventional way and add some, you know, whimsical and kind of different things to your decor. And in my opinion, why go out and spend, you know, a bunch of money on a new planter when you can find one secondhand at a good price and you're, and it's going to save you from going to the landfill. And these were made with so much better quality than what you can buy nowadays. And I just think it's super cute. And then at the Goodwill where I found the white hobnail bowl, I found this planter. And I was drawn in by the ivy. Like I thought it was really cool. And then when I got home I was cleaning it because it needed to be cleaned. But the bottom says, made in occupied Japan. Now, I think that means it was between 19, 1940 something to 1950. I can't remember. And I know Jeffrey and Misty had a debate on one of their lives about it. But I'm just floored that this has lasted that long. There's no chips, no cracks. This thing is an amazing condition. I am just floored that something that was made that long ago is in still such a good condition. So I thought this would be kind of neat to put by my kitchen sink, to put sponges in, to put my hand soap dispenser in and like sponges. I mean, and I paid $1.99 for this at Goodwill. And I had to ask them for a price because there was no price on it. And it was at the back of the shelf. So I imagine it's probably been there. People just, you know, it's brown and green. So it probably just was overlooked. Don't be afraid to look, you know, on the bottom shelves, way in the back. You may find a hidden treasure or something someone hid back there to come back later if they didn't have the money. So I was pretty, pretty excited about that. And then... I started another, yet another collection. Um, I've always wanted to collect like vintage um, Ken dolls. And I just started looking on eBay, I looked on Facebook Marketplace, and I found some really good deals on there. I don't know a whole lot about them and I'm not collecting them to like resell them. So I'm not necessarily wanting the mint of the mint condition and I know when it comes to like vintage Barbie dolls and Ken dolls it's all about the the condition and everything like that so the first one that I purchased was this guy from 1961-62 <clears throat> this is what he would have came dressed in with the the shorts and the stripes but I just like and he has the flocked hair, which they only did that for a short time. So he's in really good condition for his age. There's like in really good condition. These were meant to be played with and you know, how, not many of these survived. So I have him and then I have another one. No, he doesn't have much of the flocking left on his hair. So Poor Ken has gone bald like most men do when they get to a certain age. But again, I just really liked the look of him. His clothes are very 1960s. Like he has this jacket with a little emblem and some dress slacks and his, <clears throat> and his dress shoes. You know, and except for the hair, you know, he's, in my opinion, he's in good shape. And then here's another one. Now this one has the painted on hair. He does not have the flocked hair. 
Now, I really like this one because... Okay, sorry, it cut off. I didn't know it only filmed for just a short, for a certain time period, so... Sorry about that. So we were talking about this guy. So I really liked him because his clothes remind me of a dad in the 1950s, 60s, you know, going bowling, you know, with his bowling shirt and just the pattern of the shirt I thought was really cool. And he's in really good condition, I believe. There's only one little spot on his hair, but he's in good condition. And so I was very surprised. And then today, right before I started this video, I had ordered another one and it came in. And this one came in the original box from 1960, 1961. So this is from 1961. So, and I got this off Etsy and Again, I didn't pay very much at all. Now, he, he's, his body is a little, um, his joints are not as, as stiff as the other ones, but he has the painted on hair, like the other one, the original swimsuit and trunks. He's in overall good condition. And he's the first one I found that came, and he needs to be cleaned. I haven't um, cleaned him up or anything. But he's the first one that's come in the original box, which I thought was really cool. Like, look at these graphics. Like, there's Ken, there's Barbie. You know, like these graphics, like, are just so cool in my opinion. And then, like, they showed like, you know, you could get him in his pajamas. You could, there's another one in pajamas. Now the, this one is called Barbie. Okay, well, I can't remember what this one, but basically I think this is very risque for the 1960s, but Ken came in of just a t-shirt, boxers, and dumbbells and basically he just was at home working out in his underwear. I still think that's very risque for the 1960s but you could buy Ken in his underwear if you wanted. And then there's Ken in a suit and then I believe this one is like a university one. But to find the original box and the box is in relatively good shape um you know it's a little faded but the colors in the the colors in it are still like I I just can't believe it so it's gonna look good on a display so not only do you get the doll but you also get the box to display it with which you know that's really cool because not many of these boxes made it because these dolls were meant to be played with they were meant to be used in you know played with and not many of them made it through so that was really cool and he came with like she sent shoes and some clothes and stuff like that which I haven't even looked at and then another one came in in this box and he's he's in a little rougher shape but it came with a bunch of different clothes and the Ken doll is back in there and he's a flocked hair as well um, and he's got some balding as well but he came in pajamas as well um, and this one came with a book that would have came with them originally in the 1960s and this one is a ponytail case from 1961 as well and this is in a rough and rough shape but you can find them out there in decent shape, which I find pretty interesting. But, so, if you would have bought a Ken doll or a Barbie, they would have came with one of these books in there. And it just, like, the graphics in this is amazing. You know, and it has, like, the fashions from, from that time period. And, like... 
like it's just amazing like what they did and they used to do and um so cool and to find these books are pretty hard and this one came with one of these books they even have an american airlines stewardess barbie so i mean and this is okay so it's called the basic ken the one that came in the swimsuit then they have a tuxedo oh it's called campus hero that one and then is called sport shorts is the one that i thought looked like the bowling dad um and then this one's called dream boat so like there's several different kind of kins out here there's rally day yachtsman terry togs which is like he came in his underwear and a terry cloth robe and a bath towel and slippers and then the pajama set that that one is wearing called is called sleeper set but it's just really cool how this little booklet made it from 1961 and that's amazing in my opinion and he came with like socks and shoes and all sorts of accessories now these will just be sitting on a shelf in my office they're just a collectible that I always wanted to collect and two of them came with the vintage carrying case I have this lavender color and then I have one just like it but it's in like a buttercream yellow and these are from 1962 so these are from 1962 and they even came with like more clothes and stuff like that um, so I just thought it'd be kind of cool to collect these and set them up on a shelf and like display them. And then let me set that over here. And then I found this Barbie. And I don't collect Barbie like Barbies, but I wanted her to go with like the vintage ones. And she is not a true vintage one she's a replica but i found her for five dollars at this little junk store on the side of the road on the way home one day and even though she's a replica from i think 1993 she she goes with she's from like the 1960s originally so she just she just goes with them as a display so you know Ken and Barbie and she has a little mic I think she was that was spotlight solo or something like that but so that's all I have today and then that's the the hutch that I got for $45 and um, I put some hairpin legs on it and it looks amazing I'm gonna live with it for a while but I I don't think I'm gonna paint it I thought originally I might but I think I kind of like the wood because it makes the other things I put on it the color stand out so i want to thank you if you made it this far into the video thank you for watching my first haul video tell me what you thought like would you have bought some of these things do you like some of these things do you want to purchase some of these things now the ken dolls are not for sale unless you're a diehard collector and you want to offer me a decent price but for the most part they're not going to be for sale um but if you're interested in anything else, give me a holler and we can see what we can do and we'll talk about it. Again, the email is keytotallyperiodvintage at gmail.com or you can message me on Instagram or we can talk in the comments and connect there. Again, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this. Help me to grow this channel. It um, has been so much fun to get out there and explore this and share my love of vintage. And also, I'm going to start mixing in some of my keto stuff. So I have other videos coming for that soon. Um, we're going to be doing having a special guest and she and I will be talking. Mm -hmm.